Welcome to Micro Lectures by Living on the Red Planet. This is the Crater series. In these micro lectures, we explore the planet Mars and what it will take for humans to live there. So, for today's micro lecture, our seed question is Why does Mars have so many craters? Or, asked in another way, why does Mars have more craters than Earth? So, for this opening micro lecture, what I actually want to do is expand this beyond just Mars. And in the future lectures or micro lectures, we're going to return to focusing specifically on Mars. But for now, I want to actually look at all of the terrestrial planets or the inner planets, whatever you want to call them. Specifically, we'll be looking at Mars. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and we're going to include Earth's moon in this as well. So these five bodies, and we're just going to call them planets, um, they were all in the same neighborhood, very similar, and we see on three of them quite a bit of craters. This evidence that there was a tremendous amount of impact happening. And on two of them, not so much. You know, we really here on Earth, if you walk outside, you look around, you're probably going to see cars and buildings and mountains and trees, rivers, things like that. But you're probably not going to see a lot of impact features. You're not going to see craters or impact basins. Basins are basically very large impacts. And when you look at Venus, Venus has this very, very thick atmosphere, and without special equipment, we can't see to its surface. But if we look at Mars, if we look at Mercury, and we look at the moon, they're covered in craters. You can walk outside, you can look at the moon, you can see it without any sort of equipment. You take a fairly basic, inexpensive telescope, like the kind you'd give to your seven-year-old kid for Christmas, you point it at Mars, and you're going to see those formations. You're going to see these, perhaps you'll see Hellas Basin if you are at the right angle. Um, not so with Earth. So why, let's actually reframe this question then, why on some of our terrestrial planets do we see all of these craters? And why on the others do we not? We know that these planets were all formed around the same time. We were formed from the same process, and compared to the rest of the planets in the solar system, were formed from almost the same material. There's some differences, and that will be a topic for a future lecture, but really, we're so similar, so close. So what is it that is different? Why is it that these ones have craters and the others don't? And this question is the type of question that would be asked in a field which these lectures, these micro lectures, are going to be touching on quite often. And that field is comparative planetology. Now, just like the name sounds like planetology, the study of, and comparative, so we're looking at the differences and the similarities between planets. When we do that, Specifically, when we're looking at our sibling planets that are so similar to us in so many ways, we can start to get a bigger picture, and we can learn a little bit more about each of these planets, each of these systems, by learning about the other ones. So going back to the crater question, well, we think, as I mentioned, that these planets were formed at the same time and went through some of the same processes. We all probably went through what is called the late heavy bombardment, and there's a lot of different hypotheses for why that occurred, which I encourage you to go ahead and look up on your own because we're not going to cover that at this moment. But basically, this was a period about 4 to 3.8 billion years ago when there was a tremendous amount of activity and objects which had formed further out in the solar system were falling towards the sun, and the inner planets were in the way, and they got hit. And we can look at Mars, we can look at Mercury, and we see that. We can look at the distribution, and then we can look at what other impacts happened on top of it to help give us an idea of what, what the order was, when the time frame was that, that this happened. Now, presumably, this happened to Earth, too. But once again, where are they? 
if Earth got hit by these thousands of craters, of impacts, excuse me, causing craters, well, where are they? Well, let's look at that, the differences, because we've talked about the similarities, similar locations, similar materials, um, similar-ish size if you compare it to, you know, Mars to Earth compared to Mars to Neptune, say, you know, they're very close in size. Well, what we believe, and there's a lot of factors, and each of what I'm going to mention to you, to another extent, to, happens on the other planets. But Earth has this very unique combination, which causes much of its record to be deleted. So we have very few rocks here on Earth that are from 4 billion years ago, because Earth erases it. And the main way, about two ways that it does it, it does it through weathering, and it does it through plate tectonics. So you've probably heard about plate tectonics. And what that is, basically, is that the crust, we have these very large uh, plates which are moving around. Now, on a human scale, they're just inching, literally, um, moving very, very slow. But on a geologic scale, this is actually all happening very quickly, and Earth is very, very dynamic. So these plates, these are, they're crashing into each other and separating, and we're having new land forming. And then we're also having a process which we call subduction, where when two plates are hitting, sometimes one of them will start to slide underneath the other, and the crust that was there is getting buried. And the further down it goes, the more pressure, the hotter it is, and it actually turns into magma and reforms what was there. So we have all of this volcanic activity happening, and basically it's reshaping, resurfacing the planet. Now we also have water. Our planet, most of the surface is actually covered by water. And water is incredibly powerful when it comes to reshaping surfaces. All you have to do is take your hose, take it outside to some sand, and spray it for just a few seconds, and you'll see that it moves things around. Um, and then we also have weather, and we've got the wind happening. And yes, some of the other planets also have weather, but we, we have a lot of it. Um, and wind is very, very powerful. So a combination of all of these means that Earth really doesn't have a lot of record from earlier on. When we look at Mercury, when we look at Mars, we see a lot more. Now, as I mentioned, you know, Earth is not the only planet to have volcanic activity. In fact, all five of our inner planets, our terrestrial planets, have at some point in their history had volcanic activity. Uh, interestingly, we really don't know whether Mars still does or doesn't. There's a lot of evidence that says, hey, it probably does, because we have records from only 200 million years ago of volcanic activity. And on a geologic time scale, that's a, you know, that's a blink of an eye. That's almost nothing. So the possibility that it's still active is really intriguing and has a lot of implications for life, both past, present, and future life that humans will bring there. And we'll talk about that more in another series. Now, Mars also has weather. Again, not to the same extent that Earth does, though. We can, in fact, we've seen it from Earth, where Mars has these large dust storms, where when you turn, you put your telescope there, and you can actually see it. But Mars doesn't have as thick an atmosphere as we do. So it's a lot more limited. Venus is an example of a much thicker atmosphere, and it has a lot of weather going on. Now, Venus has also had much more recent volcanic activity. We think that within the last 500 million years, that it's actually had major resurfacing events. So we don't see as many uh, impacts as we do on our planets, such as Mars and Mercury and the Moon, which haven't had as much activity recently. Now, it's also really important to mention, and I talked about Earth having a lot of water. We know that in Mars's past, it also had surface water. And there probably 
we have evidence for there being water on the planet now, locked up in the ice, in the soil, but there was a time period in its history that we believe that there was water on the surface. Um, and this was a period we call the Noachian period, and it was probably a war warm in comparison to what it is now, and a wet world. And we see features that most likely were caused by water on the surface. Today, its environment is very cold and very dry, and we don't see that. So this reshaping that would have happened by water isn't happening to the same extent anymore the way it is on Earth. So let's recap real quick. What we've talked about is some of the similarities, some of the differences between the inner planets. We've talked a little bit about comparative planetology and the main reasons, mainly that Earth rewrites its history through plate tectonics and through weathering by water and wind, which we see to a lesser extent on the other planets. Studying the other planets is going to help us to learn more about Earth and all of those planets, the whole system that we're part of. So we're out of time now, but in the future micro lectures, the ones coming right up, we're actually going to narrow back down and look specifically at Mars again. We're going to talk about craters, their formation, the kinds of craters there are, and then we're going to focus on what implications that Martian craters themselves have for future habitation of Mars. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you found something interesting out of this. If you have questions, comments, we'd love to hear from you in the comment section below, or you can contact us directly through livingontheredplanet at gmail.com or visit livingontheredplanet.com. Stay tuned for future micro lectures. And in the meantime, keep learning.